Now we come to the fun part where we can unleash all of our creativity on the nebula. Since the original stars are of no more use to us, we're going to erase them so that only the nice, perfect computer-generated stars remain. Take the eraser tool with harness zero and a diameter slightly larger than the stars and delete all the stars in our objects. This will leave holes in the nebula, but don't worry. We're going to rectify this later and, since the stars outshine the nebulosity in the background, these holes will create a greater effect of realism. Again, you see why working with different layers is so incredibly handy. After you've erased all the stars in the object itself, you can increase the size of the eraser tool and start erasing the entire background, leaving only the nebulous parts. Be as precise as possible because we're determining the eventual size of our object here. Then, we're finally going to work on the nebula. Take the smudge tool, the little finger, and use medium strength and a fairly small brush size. Gently smear out the hard pencil strokes until you obtain a smooth texture. Work with small movements in the direction of the original pencil strokes or the filaments you'd like to highlight. For the large but faint parts, you can use a bigger brush size and delicate, circular movements. Now we arrive at yet another very important step. Choosing the right background shade. Keep in mind that once you've taken this decision, it will be very hard to change it, so choose well. In this case, I only want to make it a bit darker, but sometimes adding a bit of color, especially a hint of blue, can do miracles. To darken the background, select the background layer, then go to Image, Adjustments and Brightness and Contrast. I slide the brightness bar a bit to the left, there, that's better. I think I'm going to stick with this. Why is the selection of the exact background colour already now so important? Well, because we're going to use precisely that colour to work on the edges of our object. Over the years I've tried dozens of methods to uh, let the, the edges of the object fade nicely into the background. Uh, I've tried smudging, I've tried using a very soft eraser, I've tried using the burn tool to darken the edges, uh, but none of them has given me the wonderful effect of the mighty clone tool. Yes, that's right, we're going to clone the background on the edges of our object. Select a background layer, then click with the clone tool somewhere on the background whilst holding the ALT key. This determines the part of the drawing which you're going to clone. Next, select the object layer and start painting the object with the clone tool. Be sure to use a low opacity and flow because you only want to let the edge of the nebula fade, not darken it completely. 
here I use values around 40%, but you may have to go a lot lower when working on the more delicate parts. This way you can effectively darken all areas where it's needed in a very realistic way. Clone and smudge until the object looks exactly like how you observed it at the eyepiece. Also smudge the nebulosity behind the stars to soften the holes you made earlier. Don't forget the overview and regularly switch to full image view to verify that you haven't exaggerated somewhere. Finally, another very important step. We're going to determine how bright the object actually was compared to all the rest. For this, go to the layer window and slide the fill bar until we've got the perfect balance between objects and the rest. Remember that success is related to balance. Our sketch looks very nice already, doesn't it? But in the next video, I'm going to show some hints and tricks to make it look truly spectacular.